Recording is on. There we go. Okay, so um, so the community chat topic today is um, beyond blogging. So um, what we were kind of thinking was kind of highlighting other uses of WordPress. I, I know, you know, we, we, we get to talk about how good WordPress is for, you know, digital uh, identity and presence. And of course, we're big fans of the blog around here, but uh, we kind of wanted to highlight some of the other cool things you, you can do with WordPress. Of course, uh, splots is a big one, a whole category, forms type stuff. But there's, um, you know, there's a lot of different things. So I think we'll kind of share a couple examples, but we really want people to just kind of butt in and just go, hey, this is a cool one that I am have seen or have done or want to do. Like uh, one of my examples I'll prob I'll share if I have time isn't actually an example, but just something I want to do with it. So um, I, uh, I guess I can uh, start by kind of mentioning um, the, the, the first community chat, which is around the domains community site templates um, that I put together. That was using Gravity Forms. I think that itself is a pretty cool example of, you know, it's beyond blogging. It's not a, it's not a blogging related use case. Um, I'll throw the link in the chat to um, the state U version of the the template site. You can see from the um, from the uh, front end of it, um, but also share my screen here in a little bit um, as I get my stuff together. Also, while doing that, welcome Tim Clark. Oh. Welcome Nick. Big fans. Um, so this is the, uh, the community template here. Let me make this bigger and easier to see. Um, so the long and short of this one, if you haven't seen it, and I'm not going to spend a ton of time talking about it because like I said, we've, we've talked about it before, but I think it's a decent example of what we're talking about here. Um, this is a site designed to collect screenshots and examples of cool things people are doing, right? So, um, Basically, there's a form at submit site, and you can fill it out. There's a title, URL. Uh, you can upload a screenshot. You can give your uh, your site that you're submitting a category. You can type in a description. You can put the creator of the site's name in, and you know what their context is. Obviously, this is geared towards uh, being used at uh, college or university. So you can say, "I'm a student, faculty, or staff member." And then finally, you can put your email in uh, that. Uh, so that they could be contacted if it ever needed to be updated or something like that. And what it does is it uses Gravity Forms on the back end to um, feed in that information and create a post based on it. Oops. And so uh, as the form is filled out, you know, entries go into Gravity Forms and posts are created as part of this uh, workflow um, in the main WordPress posts area. Um, and then finally, I'm using a uh, post grid plugin to control the layout. Um, and it, it's a pretty, this is just a free plugin. Um, I don't have it particularly fancy looking on the front end. You can just see it's all it's doing is displaying WordPress posts by category. Right now, there's only one uh, site in here. So these categories will only show one thing. But if you had a bunch of class projects, you can filter by that. You could add other WordPress categories to you know, make that filtering work uh, based on whatever categories you want. So like I said, I don't want to spend a ton of time on it because we've talked about it before. Um, but I think it's a pretty good example of the type of thing we're talking about where you know, from if someone was unfamiliar with WordPress or or maybe like, blogging CMSs in general, they might not imagine that this was made with something like WordPress. They might think that this is something that you would need like a web developer to make potentially, but I am definitely not one of those. And I really just cobbled together a couple plugins to do this um, and uh, in a way that anyone could. So that's, like I said, I think a good example. Um, maybe Jim, do you want to share an example here too? Why Taylor? I just might happen to have one. Um, so I do. I've been, I've been thinking about this a bit, and I'm going to make my screen a little bigger because I can actually, you know, do this. 
So ready? Oh yeah. Okay. So watch this. This is actually something I just blogged about and I'm pretty interested in this because we created this at UMW um, in 2010, Kathy Derricky in particular. And it really, Ed, you talked about the, the stuff when we were doing the um, Gravity Forms workshop earlier this week about Oneonta. And it reminded me that Kathy Derricky basically created, this is just, it was basically called Faculty Notes at some point, and it was a biannual print of basically professional notes of what faculty, staff, and other folks had done that year. It was printed twice a year. And she had the idea of, look, we just wanna make it easy for folks to share what they've done on a weekly basis. And then those posts that come in weekly are emailed out to everybody in the community and then stand as a standalone blog post for each of the particular faculty members. So this is loading right now. This was all done with Gravity Forms. You can see this, and this was back in 2010, 11. So you get a sense that I confirmed with, with uh, UMW that they didn't change really anything. So this has been running in the same way using Gravity Forms for about a decade. And I'm really interested in this because it's still used today. If you looked at the post that I just showed, this thing is still kind of, this is June 2nd, 2022. Faculty are still using this. It really points to the use case that Ed talked about um, for kind of making some of this stuff that right now is very manual, copy and paste posts into emails or into WordPress. This is all self-service. It's vetted on the back end and it's super clean. And I think I saw Alan join the, so I couldn't not give Alan some love because this is the other example after Eagle Eye. This is Inspire created by Linda McKenna and Rachel McGurk with the help of Alan at UMW. And if you look at this, it's very, like this is early inspiration, I think for inspiration for squats, right? Using gravity forms, I believe Alan, you can correct me on this, to actually get people's, the idea behind this was a student would submit work in the class that inspired them. And it would become a kind of post board of all the things. So it's not a blog in the same way. It's a database of cool shit that people had created and shared. And the final one, which I love, is this is by Martha Burtis. This was one of the last projects before I left UMW. And I like this site because it's a gallery. And I think she was using WordPress tools, but Gravity Forms was the main tool. And basically, it's a workshop to build animated GIFs using GIMP or Photoshop, and then you submit those GIFs. And so these GIFs not only show up here, but then they are actually cycled into the video wall in UMW, which is a physical wall, so that people can actually see the GIFs students created on a video wall in physical space. And I always thought that was just a ridiculously cool example of how a WordPress blog using another kind of tool set could become something completely like not only a tutorial site, but a visual database, but then also linking in with the physical video board within what is called now the Hurley Center at UMW. So super cool stuff. Those are the ones that get me excited recently, especially because I'm digging in on Gravity Forms. So I'm trying to be reminded what I can do. So anyway, that's that. I will now get bigger. Ready? Steve Martin got small, but then he got big. I can go next um, very quickly. I have one from uh, Carlton Sites, actually, which is called Panel Story. Let me quickly grab this um, and <laughs> share my screen. I keep losing my tabs. That's great. Every time, I'm sorry, I just had this open. <laughs> if someone else wants to go first, they can. I feel very silly now. I can share maybe my favorite splot that I feel like doesn't get talked about a lot. How about that? Um, so uh, real quick here. Um, OK, so this is. <laughs> oh, oh, right. That. I, that's a bug Taylor has. I didn't kick him out, but I had I had just so you know, thought about it. It's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's great when, I, in this case, I actually just closed my browser tab, so that's awesome. Um, but 
this is a it's actually an archive um i, I don't have the uh original uh site as a wordpress site anymore but it was made using uh ellen levine's plot point plot um and um a lot more i'm sure he could share more information about it but um if you google it um there's some information about how it works and everything but i really like it because it's kind of the only way i do presentations now i don't do a lot of slides i've never been a big slides person but when i do slides i do them on the web <laughs> uh, <laughs> isn't that a mean I don't do slides, but when I do, I use Splatoon. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> everyone everyone has to sometimes, right? So um, anyway, I love it because it's really simple. It's really just, you know, what what your slides end up being is, of course, a website. Um, and uh, if you, uh, you can upload for each slide, uh, you can upload an image and you can put your title in. Uh, you can also, I don't have any subtitles on this one, but you can put text below the title. And then, of course, it is a page. So you can put stuff below the page. So the thing I always liked about presenting with this is that it kind of enforced the, uh, you know, like, it, it helped me not do the bad PowerPoint thing where you put everything you're going to say on the page, right? In my case, what I would do is I would show this, demonstrate what I was doing, and then this below part served as sort of notes for folks after the fact. And I really liked that. Uh, that's kind of how I chose to use it anyway. And one of the other cool things about it that you can't really see, but you'll take my word for it, is you can also navigate it with uh, your left and right arrow keys. So that's kind of nifty. And yeah, it's a cool way to make you know, a presentation using WordPress. So that's why I'm a fan. Cool. I now have all my stuff prepared so I can actually share my screen correctly. Uh, this is the panel story, which is a project by Iveta Jusova from Carlton. And what it is, is it's a collection of uh, interviews with the inhabitants of a particular apartment building um, that is, uh, Everything is half in English. Well, not half in English. Everything is duplicated into Czech um, so that you can go through. I can no longer read the menu, so this is my mistake. I'm going to hop back to English. But you can go through and experience the project in English or in Czech, which is the native language that these interviews were conducted in. Um, and uh, it is just a collection of people just talking about their lives and their experiences in this apartment building, but it was made using Polylang, which is a WordPress plugin that duplicates your content into the languages that you've specified. Uh, so I worked on, uh, Carlton did a migration of some of its sites and I helped work on this migration and I don't speak Czech. Uh, so Polylang was a very important tool for making sure that everything got put together neatly. Uh, and I just think that's cool. And I can drop that in the chat and I'll stop screen sharing now. I've got something to share, maybe to get us a little bit away from splots. Um, I started thinking about this year, sharing failed. All right, give me a minute to, someone else can go while I figure out my sharing permissions. Sure. Someone else have one they want to share right now, otherwise. Um... And Alan, if you're back, it's funny because when you couldn't see or hear anything, they were talking about splat point. So it might have been the self-editing mechanism of your browser. It's, it's my... <laughs> I'm going to go with that. I think uh, oh, yeah. you may want to put that in the chat just in case Alan can't He's see back. here. Okay. Yeah, I think he can. Okay. okay. Uh, I'll take a shot at showing a couple real quick. Nothing. So Alan can't see anything. So weird. All right. Can you see this map? Absolutely. All right. So this is just one custom theme that was done up for a particular thing. Um, I think maybe it's representative of just like you can do anything you want 
um, this was supposed to help people understand gentrification and where students spent their time. So you got a heat map and you got different points that they're logging and blah, blah, blah. But it's all in WordPress with some customized theming stuff. It's going a little crazy right now. You can tell that latitude and longitude got jacked <laughs> up. But, <laughs> but you get the idea. Like it's just, you know, it's a thing where you can put data and then you can do anything you want with the data. Here's another one that was really specific with the idea of trying to create these connections between ideas. And so you can make more of these little things and connect them. And it was, you know, it's just another thing using something called JS Plumber, but it's using WordPress to hold the data and do the display. Um, and then finally, I showed this before, but it's for blackout poetry. So you can black out the words from a particular thing and then you submit it and it turns it into that's not a very good one but you know you end up with these poems created from the source text um you know just strange stuff that you can do if you want to um here it is meshing wordpress posts with timeline js um and then breaking it down where you'd have an individual timeline per category um so you know, again, you can just like take the data, take the display of different things and mash them together. So like to me, WordPress is always like it's just whatever you feel like it being. <laughs> so like, I don't know that maybe it's too big a statement, but like you can do anything um, with a little bit of effort, which is cool. Yeah. Did you now is that timeline JS to WordPress plugin? Is that something that you built on top of? Because I know there was one, but then you were developing something along that line. Like, is that easily gettable? I still think Timeline JS is such an elegant tool. You're, you're muted, I'm sorry. I made it a couple of years ago and I think it still works. I just haven't had calls to go back and like do it better. But if like, if I, if I could ever get somebody who was like interested in it, like to a certain level, it's certainly something that could be done uh, much better with greater sophistication. Um, but yeah, I think it exists. I'll, I'll throw some of those links in the in the um, chat. I agree with Mo. I'm a big fan of that too. The other thing is, I know Ed, Ed, you let us know when you're ready, but just in the interim, how did you create the blackout poetry one? <laughs> in like the dumbest way possible. Um, like you, you have to understand too, like, like a, a lot of those are old, like, and so I didn't even really know how to program for a lot of them. So like that one, I just made a JavaScript thing that would look at the text and wrap all the text in divs. And if you click on it, it would just add a class. And the class was like, set the text to blue, set the background to blue and do a little something to make the edges a little bit funny. Um, and then that stuff just is all written to a gravity forms post field in a hidden way. And so you're just submitting via gravity forms. So like you can, you know what I mean? You're kind of like Rube Goldberging something together based on like, I know a tiny bit of this and I know how this thing works. So can I make, can I make a contraption out of these little bits and pieces? And then to me, that's what's cool. Cause then eventually you learn more stuff and you can look back and be like, that was a terrible way to do that. I can't believe I did that. But it, it like like Lauren said, it works. So I mean, like that's part of the fun. Yeah, and the thing too there is it's kind of a CSS and a you know data import hack, right? Is that Absolutely. really using JavaScript? Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you just learn little bits of something and a little bit of something else. You just have to not be intimidated that like, I don't understand the entire world of JavaScript or I don't understand everything about CSS. So, but I know this part and this part and can I just glom it together? And I do want to quote Eric uh, here saying that, you know, gravity forms is the hammer for any nail shaped object. I, and that's why one of the fascinating things about the, this, this month is I am convinced when I look back on the projects I didn't really understand for the last decade, a lot of them like could have been done or have been done with some element of gravity forms, which for a $90 plug, it's pretty impressive. Anyway, luckily this isn't a gravity forms commercial. Is Ed Beck back with us or anyone? Oh yeah, he just, Ed Beck keeps on leaving the meeting. 
So I think he might be having problems with this screen share. Anyone else? And if we have issues with screen share too, I can always share um, mm -hmm. for them and kind of navigate. We can do that too. Yeah. Ed, I see you're back in. If we're still having problems with the screen sharing, I can maybe be, I can click around for you if you want and share my screen. That'd be easier. Ah, we got it. So yeah. stop. All right. So I spent some time thinking about how could I make WordPress look more like the OER Commons? Um, and what I see when I look at something like the OER Commons is a pretty simple landing page. I see a search bar. I see a couple custom taxonomies that are exposed at the front end. And I see a search. And so I had done things in the past where I had created something splot like where I had like had students who were doing things like doing projects around um, the uh, UN sustainable development goals. And so we created a site that worked with the default categories. We even did like introductions to each category. And then we had the student projects um, uploaded as WordPress posts, but you know, it just wasn't quite cool enough for me. I, it wasn't quite there yet. And I was like, okay, how could I get more of this feel where we could categorize not just one way, but multiple ways? And um, the impetus for me to really dig into this was when Taylor released his community, um, his community splot, because I was like, that's cool. I want it to be cooler. Right. And, 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 and I don't mean that as a, as a, as a rub against Taylor, because what was beautiful about what he did was the simplicity. It was simple. Everybody could get rolling with it. It was a splat, but I started to say like, okay, what if I could make it a little bit different? How would I do it differently? And I started thinking about like, okay, in my community site, um, what if I wanted to not just be able to categorize by the types of projects they were over on, you know, over on the side? What if I also wanted to be categorized what it was built with? And I also want to be categorized with whether it was student work or faculty work or faculty working with students. So I started to think of like all these different categories that I would want to have if it was, um, Again, my SUNY, uh, my SUNY Create initiative runs at multiple campuses. There's 64 of us. So what if I wanted to have a landing page for each individual campus where they could see, you know, just their projects? What would that look like? And I could do kind of some of the things that I did um, in other places, and I could make it sortable and filterable by both at the same time. So that was kind of my goal when I went into this. Um, and I really found that by using the custom taxonomies in WordPress, and again, I don't code, I don't do it, I don't like it, it makes me angry. So I found a plugin that I could manage the custom taxonomies pretty easily. Um, and, and I used TaxoPress for that. And I said, okay, I want to build a um, filter that works and works with Ajax so that as I click things, though that my tiles will appear and disappear because I thought that was kind of cool in the way that Taylor did it. So I use search and filter. Um, and I started to think to myself, okay, is there kind of like a cookbook to make like a really good repository in the same way that we've found like cookbooks that make like kind of like really okay splots or really good splots by using gravity forms or gravity forms plus, um, Plus a similar, yeah, I, Taylor, I can't, I can't design. So I, the only thing that I'm able to do is um, copy something. Um, and I did, you know, with, with the, with the plugin I'm using, the search, the filter and search, um, you can do a simple form and an advanced form. And so I was thinking about doing that, like maybe my simple form just has like type of site and built with in the drop down menu. But then I have the advanced search where I have even more options available. And so I was just really thinking about that of uh, what's holding WordPress back from being like a truly great repository with really good searching and things. And, and, and the thing that I haven't done yet is beef up the WordPress search because the WordPress search is really just a word search and pretty bad. 
Um, and, and so I want to integrate a better search into that, like um, Relevacy um, is one that I keep getting suggested. Um, and it might be worth buying a subscription for that to make some, you know, some things where it's not just a visual collection, but you can find it pretty easily. So that's what I've been thinking about and working on is, is like, what would, what stops WordPress from being just a really great repository? It's funny too, Ed, because the things you're talking about remind me of another project I know you've been instrumental in is thinking of the, what's based on WordPress commons in a box, right? But talk about more than just WordPress. Like you have the group at the city university of New York who built that out as a social networking tool. And it's funny when I saw this, I didn't know, and I'm so I'm asking, is SUNY thinking about, on top of the work you're doing filtering OERs, also thinking about bringing in the social element of sharing and building some of that with a platform like Commons in the Box? Does that make sense? Yeah, um, you know, what's, what's kind of nice about Commons in the Box is it does it for us. You know, when you create your site, it puts the tiles on the home page. Each individual one has the choice of whether to put that in or not. Even if it's not part of the Commons in a Box install, you could still connect to it via RSS and still get a tile on that page. So, you know, it's not so much the community site that um, that I was trying to solve here. I was more trying to build community and um, I, you know, the really hard thing to answer is, okay, what is domain of one's own? We've all, we've all struggled to give that one to two sentence answer. Um, and, and the easiest way for me to describe what it is, is to use examples and show what's being done. And so this was more drawing inspiration off of um, things that other people in the community talk about all the time, the OU creates. How can we do that showcase of the best of the best um, and show that community, but also maybe show how the sausage get made just a little bit um, so that people can look at it and go, oh, yeah, so that's an Omeka site. I'm starting to recognize an Omeka site when I see it. Oh, that's a WordPress site. I'm starting to recognize those when I see it. Oh, that's a Pressbooks. Um, and, and, and start to really think about um, Domain of One's Own beyond WordPress. Because if Domain of One's Own is just WordPress, then maybe comes in a box does it better. Maybe. I, I know that's fighting words in this group. But like, seriously, um, you know, I want to show the potential beyond, which is why it was so important to me. The second category I added was, what was this built with? The only good thing there is Boone, who developed Commons in the Box, doesn't even have a smartphone. So he wouldn't know if we're talking shit on him, which is kind of what I like. Well, never know. And, and I'll that's, it I, I think that kind of gets into I know I know this is literally WordPress beyond blog is the name of this, but like one of my favorite things about WordPress in the context of Domain of One's Own is that it can be nestled in an ecosystem of other tools, right? Like you can do things like, all right, we've got an Omeka site, but it's really common for people to have an Omeka site as sort of like the repository and then a front end site. And depending on how you do it, you can even theme them similarly so that you users don't even understand that there's a difference between the two. We do this a lot. Um, like we're, we're thinking about this a lot at Reclaim right now with the way we do our ed tech offerings and like having some of the stuff we're still building out, but like, but like we want to have like a WordPress front end that's flexible in a way where we can have that link into all kinds of different tools. Right. So it like Jitsi, like, um, like, uh, you know, uh, other, like our headless workshop sites, like all kinds of things. Yeah, we've got a site that we're just starting to develop right now that uses that exact principle, Taylor. It's going to have a WordPress front. It's a theater and dance production studio site. And, uh, you know, we've, we're looking at Zen Photo or, or maybe Omeka as, as, the, as the gallery for the, for the media. So just getting that started. What is, I, I'm not super familiar with Zen Photo. Is that it very similar to Omeka or? Uh, well, it's there in the C panel. It's just one of those um, oh. applications listed as a, as a, there's, there's several of them that you can use as photo galleries, basically. You know, literally in your, own, your own uh, version of Flickr, basically. Okay. Yeah, I tried that. I mean, it, we didn't even talk about it, but I, I'd be interested. I know Darcy Norman is one person who does this really well. Alan, probably another one, and there's many others even here. 
like using WordPress as a photo, like photos, I use Flickr, but WordPress as a custom photo app is something Darcy got off of Flickr and did, does all his stuff. And I kind of would love to have a sit down with Darcy and find out how he does it because while I love Flickr and I still have X amount of photos, like I like the idea of my photo experience being integrated with my blog as I get off of Instagram and the rest of them. You know, mm -hmm. like I like the idea of it being there. But I don't one, know. one of the things I want to do with Gravity Forms, but it's not a technical challenge as it is a social challenge, is I want to make like a for my family and extended family, essentially social network, um, but not not all the features, right? But I'm thinking like a gravity form that's literally just like the, you can give it a title and post a photo and that's it. And the objective for me being less sharing of pictures of my child on social media, but again, much more a social challenge than it is a technical one, so. Yeah, it's interesting too. I mean, the one you brought, Tom, the post you linked in the chat about the continuum of domain of one's own and WordPress multi-site. For me, like it's not even fighting words because I think there's just, depending upon what you need, it's both. It's like, there's some real good places for comments in a box, but you probably don't want to run that on the cPanel server, right? You probably want to have your own space for it. And there's a whole bunch of different ways of thinking about all of those tools. But like, for me, it's just even down to the basic level of a cPanel instance, wherever all the stuff you can do with WordPress, right? Like none of this is limited to a special setup, whether it's domain of one's own WordPress, both side or whatever, like it's pretty much the open source. Like think about it for a second, if you will. And this is, I'm killing time till someone else shows some more examples of do, but domain of one's own is essentially what a lot of these tools we're talking about. It's basically wrapping cPanel around WordPress and integrating WordPress and using the open source plugins that we have access to. And some of them obviously a premium to make this work, whether it be Shibboleth, whether it be, you know, um, allowing dashboard access on a kind of restricted level. Like we built our infrastructure on top of WordPress. So like you could say WordPress is not a blog for us. It's actually, you know, the wrapper of a hosting company's infrastructure, which I think really when I think about WordPress, I think like it really is the limit as if building infrastructure for your company. And think about how many sites you go to on a daily basis when you're like, I know this company did this in WordPress. Or yeah. I think this is in WordPress, right? Well, and on top of that, we're we're looking at moving more of it, right? Like that, that's kind of the thing is like long, long term, we would want even more of it inside of WordPress. Uh, if, if, you know, it to give us that control over it, that's the great thing about WordPress, right? Um, I definitely have a habit of like sniffing out WordPress sites now where either you throw a WP login on the URL or inspect it and go, ha, that is a WordPress site um, in a way that I didn't before. Actually, I'm glad Monica, you should you should share the tech bar appointment process if you're willing to. I think that's a cool. Yeah, one. sure. Um, can you hear me? Okay. Yep. Cool. Um, okay. Well, I will try sharing my screen. All right. I'll do my window. Um, let me just pull up. Oh. The, the same thing happened with the screen sharing permission. So somebody <laughs> just give me a second. <laughs> Sounds good. I can kind of mention it because this is something that. Um, or uh, I guess if you just want to share your screen. Sure. Yeah. I'll I talk through it. <laughs> um, so Plus for the I tech bar. I still have a login on this site if you need me to log in. <laughs> <laughs> um, that is true. Um, so the tech bar is, if you aren't familiar with it, it's what we it's staffed by students and it's what we use to support domain of one's own and um oh pete left the meeting he'll be back don't worry yeah. he hasn't left you high and dry um and so domain of one's own is one of the majority of our appointments but we also do like we have a studio you can book studio time um and you can get help with video production and all sorts of things so this is a site completely built in WordPress um, and we're using a plugin called Bookly for the appointment system. Um, <laughs> so Taylor, if you want to click 
just go through just go through the appointment process. So you're able to select the service and you can choose for either in person or online. Um, and I would just do yeah, online. So then it will show you what if you, you can keep it on any or it'll show you the ones that are available. We only have one student uh, working this summer. Um, so that's that. And then the next is just choose the time. And it'll tell you since it's since you selected any, it'll tell you who you who it's with. And then it has some additional questions on it. Um, and some of this is conditional logic as well. Um, it won't ask you if you have a website if you're doing a video or a video uh, uh, appointment. Um, and the one for is this for a class? If you hit yes, it'll drop down more information because um, we do have a lot of professors work in either domains or we video projects into their class. And then you can hit submit booking and it's all good. I do think you might have to. I don't know what's required on this page, to be honest. Um, and then I'll go through. And oh, oh those are required. Okay. Um, you'll get an email. You'll get an email of a reminder. Um, you're able to cancel it. Um, and the person that's booked gets the email. And we have it integrated with Google Calendar. So all of the workers can just see appointments at a glance in our Google Calendar. So, yeah. And that's just the booking side. We also have a blog attached to this site and our basic about and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think that's a cool one. Um, and like how much like I know I know because I was I was there as this was being created. Like we, we spent a lot of time at SNC figuring out how we could do something like this on a platform that would be like affordable yeah. <laughs> and cause there's, there's things that do this, but not, not a lot that check every box there of like multiple people you can register with and calendar integration and things like that. And bookly was, I think by far the most full featured and cheap cheapest option. And it was in WordPress. So we could integrate it into stuff we were already using. So that was a really cool one. Yeah. The best thing with bookly is it was a one-time purchase it was not a subscription um and all of the add-ons then you can like sort of pick and choose to like add more uh, functions to your site so we have quite a few add-ons going on but those are still only a one-time purchase um because we were using meeting bird but then it got bought by something so then we had to find something and even else meeting bird had some significant restrictions because we couldn't do things like have the concept of multiple people you were meeting with, we were only able to take one meeting at a time there, even if we had five people working. I think. Oh. Or maybe we were paying for the pro. I don't remember exactly all the things there, but the the fact that we could do it that way and and do that on Bookly, I think the only ongoing cost is support, but like it it was it was kind of a no brainer. Yeah, and honestly, I I haven't I mean I haven't had to use the support. Um it's been working pretty fine and um it's pretty easy to they have their own sort of customizer of like appearance but then i we also have some css on in the additional css thing in wordpress doing our own stuff so yeah thanks i did want to i i don't want to throw lauren under the bus so i'll jump in here and I, it's interesting that tom should see that one of the things that we played with recently and i kind of dig it and i'll just show it to you quickly and lauren found it and she did all the work so lauren at any point if you want to jump in or not that doesn't matter i just wanted to make it known like here's a really cool example and let me kind of get rid of myself this is an events calendar plugin and i think tom linked to the right plugin but this actually is what we're using for some of the reclaim and tech stuff and just to get a sense of it but like this fully plugin i think I don't know if it was like a hundred bucks or whatever, but it actually like integrated into our main WordPress site and created a whole kind of booking event system where we could link out. Like it's pretty amazing. And the work we had to do on our side on the back end was, you know, I don't want to speak for Lauren. It might be more than I'm assuming, but I mean, at least from my point of view, like it was pretty seamless of an integration and in getting us up and running with, 
a really well integrated events calendar to a site that we're already running. I would love it. Yeah. I think it's so slick. Lauren. Jim, to your point, I mean, in terms of how plugins and how those can generally go, you know, this one was fairly simple to get up and running, which I appreciate. Um, and it's pretty lightweight as well. You know, it doesn't seem super bulky or heavy for the site uh, and it's very robust. So um, that's something that was super exciting for me. I like that you can have different options for the types of sites or the types of events that you want to pull in um, and then the views that you want to show. So there's a lot of settings on the background in the background to configure that uh, based on what you know we're wanting to highlight or show. Um, and so I like the list versus, versus month options. This plugin also has a lot of different add-ons. There is a free version, which is what I started with and then very quickly was like, no, it's going to be worth it to just go ahead and get the paid version. Um, but I think there's even more that we can add to it in the future around registering for events, for instance, or dealing with like calendar notifications. I know that that's something that at least I would, you know, like to pursue. Um, I think right now you have that add to calendar button, which is super nice, but um, you know, for flex courses, for instance, you don't want a calendar event that lasts a month long, right? So being able to say, okay, like the week one event for this flex course, can we create sort of a sub event or something like that? And just being able to subscribe to the calendar as a whole. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of flexibility here um, and we'll continue to make this, you know, a more helpful space over time as we're filling out descriptions and everything. But Jim, that's a great point. That plugin has been really cool to work with. No, I've, I've loved it. Now, I mean, just as we're talking about beyond WordPress, like that's a full fledged calendaring tool within WordPress. Right. And that's like, it's an application within an application, which for some of these early plugins like gravity forms, or even for those of you who remember pod press, like there was like, Oh wait, like there's whole applications within WordPress now that could do, you know, you know, when, the first time that podcasts were popular, WordPress was building out infrastructure around it. And there was video tube and stuff like that, which was always harder to do video. But M, you put your hand up, so I'll shut up and you can talk. <laughs> yes. Um, well, I just wanted to share a quick thing um, that one of our faculty does quite often for off-campus studies. Um, we have our learning management system, which is Moodle, um, that requires sort of a dual authentication. And it's very difficult with our students abroad in different time zones, calling the help desk um, to get authenticated abroad. So what one of our faculty members uh, does is that he creates a WordPress site to share an itinerary, um, to share essay prompts and, um, just to basically create uh, his course online, but has it locked down because they do share an itinerary, they do share a map. Um, uh, so only the students have um, access to that site as logged in users or users that are um, added to the site and they share a password um, so that they don't have to go through the authentication process, but it's secure enough uh, that they can access um, abroad, um, but it's not completely public. And I want to see if I can share. Mm -hmm. All right. Is this good? Can everyone see my screen? Yep. All right. So this is um, the site. It's Architectural Studies in Europe. And they go to different parts of Europe. So this year was Rome. Um, this is a, actually a Google Maps iframe embedding. So it's not a plugin, but they just embed the iframe. And they highlight different locations, like where they're staying, um, different spots. They also have the courses that um, are being used for abroad studies. And they have their itinerary. So some sensitive information is shared here. That's why it is locked down. So if you just visit the site, it's required to have a password. Um, and even when you go into the password to um, add your sort of blogging experience for students, they have to log in. 
Um, so it's it kind of has a two layer security aspect to it, and they have um, different site visits, which is uh, great for students to just visit on their own time, and they don't have to um, do submissions through our learning management platform. And he shares the prompts uh, for essays and presentations. They have an archive of different um, countries that they visited before um, and presentations. And that I just wanted to show that as a different uh, possibility for WordPress um, to host a site uh, instead of just blogging. I'll stop sharing. Absolutely. Yeah, that's like an elegant travel site, right? Like almost like yeah. a travel guide site of here's where you're going, here's your itinerary. I really like that. That's cool. There was mention of a podcaster, and I know that a podcasting site, for those, if that's something you're interested in, Joe, and I can't take, I'm only showing what Tim Owens already did, which is a, a theme for me. But um, here is the Reclaim Today site. And this is a, like, I, it's kind of more of a video podcast, but these are ones, and there's Linda McKenna, DS106 for Life. But this is using, I believe, uh, a plugin and theme combination called Podcaster. And We're using seriously elegant. simple for the for the podcast feed part, which is right? mentioned in the chat. Yeah, I just logged in and, and poking around. And so here it is: podcast media, podcast widgets, seriously simple podcasting, and then you know some of this Redux framework. I don't know. I'd have to. I mean, see, I think this is a premium theme, but again, Tim built a lot of this, so I'm not sure all of the ins and outs, but this has been pretty slick and pretty simple to do, I have to say. It, it's not too too crazy of a, of a setup in, in my mind, and it works pretty well. What else you got, people? Is that it? Is that all? Yeah, we're talking about book publishing? Sure. <laughs> Do you want to go down that road, Ed? <laughs> you have made great strides. Yes. Tim, you're muted. How about now? Is that better? We can hear you now. Okay. I have something I can show, but it's so simple as to um, maybe not uh, rise to the high standard of some of the things that we've seen, but uh, in trying to get... Um, faculty to think about using WordPress beyond blogging assignments, um, I just invite them to use a dead simple plugin called A to Z listing, which turns um, posts into uh, alphabetical entries by the first letter of the title. And um, here I'll just, I'm not going to try to share my screen because I'm pretty sure I'll flame out, but I'll just put the link to the course site uh, in the chat. And um, the idea is that students are engaging with key terms or keywords, um, I guess, in the spirit of, um, you know, there's a whole genre of key terms books now in different disciplines. But um, so they'll come up with a term and write a post that the term is the title. The body of the post is they're encountering it in the in the readings. And then they're just all sort of sorted A to Z. And um, if you enable um, replies, then students can comment or add or continue to grow the different entries in the A to Z listing. So it's a good way um, without there being a ton of lifting on the technical side for, um, for faculty to kind of ease into other more creative uses of WordPress. Um, so I, I've actually used this a few times. I, I wish I had a better example to show than this one, but um, I couldn't find one while we were while I was listening, but this, this gets the idea anyway, it's agency brilliant. listing is the plugin and it works really well. I mean, a glossary of terms like that, where you can go in, I mean, I already went in and I saw like the alienation and then a comment on it. That's slick. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. Like, especially I, I kind of love WordPress plugins like that. That can be just kind of like, here's one aspect because a, I think it makes it easier to show people like, 
this is what this thing does and they don't have to wrap their mind around like well first we have to talk about all the possibility you know <laughs> um and and then on top of that like this could easily be integrated as if if you did want to do something more complicated you could definitely use this as part of that i think Another one that was kind of given to us by OU that I think is an interesting example of WordPress beyond the blog was using a plugin called Doxify, I think. Basically, OU created documentation for the domain of one's own early on, 2015, 2016. And then they basically said, anyone could just import a version of our documentation into their own WordPress instance using a plugin called Doxify. And then there was a, a combination of plugins, Doxify, and then a find and replace tool. So you could take out all the examples of, of Oklahoma and put in another university. And it was a really, it was a little bit labor intensive, but not much, not much more than copying and pasting templates for gravity forms. But that was a great example of WordPress as a documentation hub that can be shared seamlessly across it. I don't have an example to point to because I don't want to go into anyone's docs. But I'm sure there'll be some that people. Oh, is it state you? Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you, Meredith. Sorry about that. Documenter, not Doxify. I don't know what the hell Doxify is. Yeah, there it is. I love that one. That was a very useful one, and you know, all of our schools now have some version of that. I like this because it doesn't look like a WordPress site at all, right? Like this is full blown documentation of getting up and running in domain of one's own created by one school, one school, but because of the way the plugin was made, simple to package up, find and replace names and images were still manual work and then allow other folks to import it for their instance, which I thought was really pretty awesome. Adam Kroom actually uh, was, the responsible party behind this. And it was really, really elegant. So kudos to Adam Crew. I'll share on uh, press books and uh, Jim's making fun of me because I've been hitting myself against uh, a wall for the last couple days. Um, but press books is a system that's built on top of WordPress and it looks like it's just a theme if you only look at the surface level a theme that orders your pages into a specific type and um gives you kind of a simple table of contents and kind of forces your content to be in a linear way but when you look under the hood of Pressbooks, the real thing that it does that gives it value beyond wordpress is you can export in different versions, different versions of the same document. And I think the way that Pressbooks did that is really interesting. First, they built an export routine where you can export just a simple XHTML file of your entire website. And then that XHTML file becomes the foundation of all of the other exports that they do um the all the other exports like an epub they take that xhtml file they have a custom css sheet for epubs they put it through an epub validator and then you get an epub popped out the other end which is your same exact content and when you look at the content on a pdf page it looks just like the content that is on your pressbooks page including like doing some pretty cool things like having logical fallbacks for things like what if there was a youtube video it'll add the image from the front of the youtube video add a link to back to the chapter so that you could um go through that and, and get to the youtube video somewhere else so if i were to go to the same you know page within the web interface and i look at the same page within the um app it's gonna look very similar, um, which lets us do some book publishing 
um, it lets us do some book publishing um, using uh, Pressbooks and WordPress as its base. Yeah, and that's pretty gorgeous. And Pressbooks is another nice example of just spitting out an entire like ecosystem on top of WordPress, right? Like the tool upon a tool. And, you know, I know your struggles have been, I was one to say Herculean, but you said more appropriate Sisyphean, Sisyphean or however you pronounce that. But one final thing about it that I really like um, all of the press books create a federated network with each other. And so what that means is you can clone a book from one university's press books to another university's press books without getting the backup file. Um, so if this is, if it's Creative Commons license and Tim Clark has an awesome, you know, project that he's been working on at Mullenberg and I just find the website, I can pull his book into mine as long as his site is Creative Commons licensed. If it's copyrighted um, and they set the copyright in, in the book info, it will fail. But if it's got the Creative Commons license, I can do it and I don't need permission from him. And that's one of the reasons why the open education community loves it so much is because the technology works like the license does. And in SUNY, I'm only allowed to talk about licenses and not technology. Just jokes. <laughs> But he's not bitter. Cool. That that's, awesome. I didn't know about the federated part of Pressbooks at all. It's really cool. That's, um, that's yeah. I now I'm like, man, I wish that was a thing in WordPress core, but for like pages or categories of posts or something. Just because that that could that would be amazing what you could do with that if that was a feature, maybe a plugin or something. But Boone's oh. working on it. Oh wow. I keep telling him to look at the way Pressbooks does it, but there's something in there that he's not satisfied with. But he doesn't quite tell me why. Because that would be so cool to, to you know, to like, I, I guess it's just kind of another type of blog post syndication, but sometimes, like, like you could kind of do this stuff with RSS, but I like that the license integration is there, and it's not an ongoing pull, right? It's just like, I just want to kind of grab this stuff in now. You know, and way, they, it's much cleaner than like copying and pasting, compare. obviously. Once you make your copy, you can make differences, of course. So they built in a tool where you can wow. put the tool up side by side and see what's different. Um, since the open community uses H5P so much, they've made sure the cloner also pulls all the H5P data, which is really important. Like they've done some really nice things that extend it, um, which is why even though I'm really frustrated with them today, I'm still uh, big fans of Pressbooks. Yeah. Well, it's interesting, Tim, you brought up the H5P thing too. And like, how does H5P fit into to more than a blog? I'd be interested because H5P is not my strong suit. I know a lot of folks like Alan, if he's still here, built the H5P kitchen and there's been some amazing stuff. But I, I would be interested from folks who play with that to know how that's working and how WordPress and H5P work together. You might be muted, Tim, even though you have that honking <laughs> microphone. Right. Sorry. Um, I, I, I'm, I tell folks that WordPress can serve as a container. H5P will allow you to build components um, and then essentially embed them as iframes, the same as the Night Lab stuff. So, um, you know, as, as long as you sort of work folks through, um, or, or we saw a, a Google my maps example earlier too um, as long as they sort of understand how to work with that you know little little um, bit of uh, HTML then um, they're off to the races and um, you know I'll defer to, to Alan on any anything other than that with it when it comes to h5p <laughs> yeah h5p isn't as integrated into WordPress as it is into Drupal, because um, it's, it's just a little bit different. But you can see here's a book that has some H5P in it already, and that's working. And what that looks like on the back end is it's embedded 
in here into a, by a short code. So we can go in and go to our H5P content. We have the full H5P content selector. So you can see there's about 74 H5P interactives in this one book. Um, we can do, we can import all the different types of H5P and then it kind of lives alongside um, and can be inserted into a post by using a short code. And these are all developed on the H5P side, like not in WordPress, but is there a, there's a separate H5P? So when you talk about H5P, you've got to understand that um, H5P is a series of plugins that can be installed into multiple platforms. So you, when you install H5P into WordPress, you can be the source. It's not that you're just embedding H5P made at h5p.org or h5p.com. You have everything that you need to both create H5P and also share and embed them throughout the internet. The yeah, three you applications get all of those options. H5P can be installed into our Moodle, WordPress, and Drupal, where Drupal has the tightest integration into the way it works. WordPress is like alongside it, um, but Drupal um, can be more integrated. That's one of my favorite things about H5P is that because you have that flexibility, it gives the end user of it a lot of flex. Like, so it, there was a situation I helped uh, a fact member years ago with, they, they made like a little H5P thing and wanted to put it in an LMS that I didn't have access to, or it was, it was not one that I was an administrator of, but they were able to still use it in an iframe and host it on h5p.com or .org or whatever. Um, so th having that flexibility of like, you can just embed it or you can do the plugin in integration and then you have a lot more control over it. So cool. Tom, Tom you're, you're up. would like to speak. Uh, well, just real quick. I mean, like, that's the thing. Like, you you can do anything you want. Like the H5P is just like chunks of code and you're keeping the data in WordPress then you can iframe it anywhere. Like to me, that's the same thing. Like we built a, a WordPress theme that we could stick in canvas so that you could hide like the header and the sidebars and it would feel like it was stuck in canvas, but on the outside, it would look like a regular WordPress site. So, I mean, same idea though, like an iframe to stick the thing in there. And if we wanted to copy pages from other WordPress sites, like I can't say anything about the legality of it, but it'd be super easy to do. You just have a place where you paste in the URL of that thing and like getting the content from it, easy, not, not a problem. So, I mean, like that's the fun thing about standardized platforms like that, grabbing the stuff or putting the stuff someplace else, you have all those controls and can do whatever you want, which I think is super cool. Yeah, it's interesting, too, because a lot of that early on playing with WordPress for years was syndication, right? That whole idea of pulling a post from one site to another and thinking, wow, that's magic. And then they can all live together, but yet link out to the original. And yet, you know, that syndication platform, Feed WordPress is the plugin I'm referring to. Like, there's a whole, like, there's NS Cloner, which I understand clones entire sites and something like Trinity Western University is using that to create like cloned templates for their WordPress multi-site, right? Like, so they're getting in there and their WordPress multi-sites, like you want a portfolio template cloned based on what we have. Is that a fair kind of take on, on how a tool like NS Cloner works for kind of building out some of that standardized platform stuff on top of templates? Good. Cool. Glad. It's good to be right. Um, well, we're a few minutes over time. So I think uh, if anyone wants and needs to head out, that's cool. Um, if um, I'm going to probably close this up here in a couple minutes, but uh, I, I appreciate everyone who came and shared stuff as, uh, as well. That was really cool. And we'll have a recording up probably today. So, yeah. Yeah, that was fun. Thank you, Taylor. Any good to major see you all. Yeah, it's good to see you all. And any major things we missed in terms of like, you know, I know we can stop the recording at any point, but I love the idea 
it's like reinvigorating to get back into the idea of WordPress as platform for all these different things and then see the examples people have done, like the glossary one. As I simple like as you say it is, Tim, it's still like, yes, like a post, that's a link, that's a glossary item. Yes. Like that, that to me is always the exciting or has been the exciting piece of working in WordPress. One that comes up uh, and I think is impressive, but I don't, I'm not like a huge fan.